Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Arena, and this time, I'm at 9-0 with Death Knight. So I've been doing this run off-camera, and while I think my deck is pretty solid, I didn't expect to go 9-0 with this deck. Uh, if you look at my deck, it's got some pretty good early game aggression. For example, with the Bonebreaker, we've got two Heart Strikes to clear our opponent's minions. And we have a lot of burn, for example, three Howling Blasts and a bunch of weapons like Quartzite Crusher to finish off our opponent. What this deck does lack a little bit is value generation. Of course, we have a lot of card draws, but we don't have many things that can actually discover. What I'm actually relying on for value generation is the Frost Strike and the Steward of Scrolls. Raid Boss Anixia is a great card that you can use as a late game finisher as well, because if you just don't kill all of your 2 2 whelps, often your opponent can't even deal with this and you just straight up win the game. And we also, I also high rolled the highest, like the best treasure in Arena right now, which is Loyal Henchman. So, can this deck go 12? Considering that we're at 9 wins, I'd say there's a chance. I don't want to get my hopes up too high. But with this deck, I really don't want to play the value game with people. I'd rather just try to finish them off sooner than la later. So you'll see me playing this deck very aggressively. Currently against a Hunter. Let's see here. I'm not sure if Night Captain is a keep. It's a fairly solid card if you can get the, the honorable kill off. But I think we have better cards in our deck. Mining Casualties is definitely a keep, and Wandmaker is a very solid card that I can play on 3 as well. So I think these two are what we should keep. Now this deck is super solid if you can draw the Bonebreaker on turn 1, of course. Because the ability for this thing to trade with minions and also push face damage is so good. Okay, since my opponent played a 1-3, I'm more inclined to play a 2-2 over Mining Casualties. So I think I'll do that. At the same time though, I just drew Warg, so if I play one of these guys, I can play the Warg next turn and trade into the 1-3, so I think I like this. And if my opponent plays any minion, Mining Casualties can deal up to 4 damage to that. So that's the uh, Titan Forge traps, probably. Or it could be the Crusher. If it is a Cyclopean Crusher, it'll go into the Warg so we can Frost Strike it next turn. So it's not so bad. Let's play the Warg here. My assumption is that it's a uh, Titan Forge trap, so let's get ready for that. That's a top deck, for sure. Okay. Now, one mistake people make is holding the henchman for too long. I think this is a good turn to play it, actually. So let's Frost Strike this. Frigid Frigidara, what does that draw us? That honestly... Is that guaranteed to go off? Oh no, it has a really good chance of going off because we have Horn of Winter, three Howling Blasts, one Remorseless. The question is, do I need the card draw? I might actually just go with a Bone Breaker here. It's tough. What's my next turn going to look like? Probably three plus two, or five. In the turn six, I can play this. I guess it's okay. So I'm going to get this out sooner than later. Take control of the board really quick. Yeah, you definitely don't want to hold this until it's like a 10-10. Yep, we were expecting that. So what are the secrets? Well, there's Wandering Monster. Uh, there's Freezing Trap, stuff like that. Are we looking at just a hero power from him? The Wandering Monster, Freezing Trap, 
Explosive Trap. Probably not Explosive Trap, if I were to guess. Snipe, maybe. I think if it's Freezing Trap, I'd rather just send the 1-1 one, one face, because I don't want to lose the 4-4. Four, four. It's a Wandering Monster. And it's a bait and switch. Okay. From here, I kind of want to just clear that. Because I don't want to lose my 4-4. Four, four. So I can go Heart Strike plus Hero Power. Or I can go Glacial Advance. Which one do I do? This goes face for sure. Just depends on which one I want to do here. I think we do this. Now the reason is because that one's more expensive and I have the mana to spend. Okay, Death Rattle Minion. Could easily be a Revenant or something, although it can't be played this turn. So next turn is a good time to play Frigidara. What's the actual chance it hits both raw spells? So we have 1, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5 out of 7 frost spells. It's about 50-50, I think. It's slightly less than that. Yeah, the exact probability is probably like about 40-something percent. It's also a good time to play this. I think I'd rather go Bonebreaker, Bloodguard, start pushing face damage. With every strike, we have... So I like getting the weapon out here because I have three weapons in the deck. And I don't want my opponent to like play in Awakening Tremors before getting the buff. So killing the buzzard sooner than later seems right. And my, even if I don't kill it, my opponent just trades into the 2-2 if he wants. So there's no point of keeping it alive. Okay, my opponent has two beasts left. We already saw the Silver Serpent, which was, I think, was drawn. Wow, that is a slow turn. How much damage do we have? Four, six, seven, eight. Eight damage? I think I'll just play the Frigidara, see what I get. We get a Howling Blast. And a Howling Blast. Interesting. This is definitely get going here. And these two should go face. Or should this trade? Because we don't have the lethal setup, technically. I think I should still go face here. Pushing any damage seems good. Okay. Should this be a win? So if I double Howling Blast face, that's 6 damage. But then I have to get through that taunt, which doesn't seem possible. Wait, I can Howling Blast, Howling Blast. Trade the Blood Knight, then I can trade Frigidara, trade the 2-2. I think we're like very close. So this turn seems like it. I'll just weapon up. Getting that seems fairly okay. Wait, but what, what will my trades look like? So 4-7 into there. Heart Strike maybe? This into there, that into there. Hold on, let me just do this first. So hero powering wouldn't be that great. I think it's just this then. Okay, my opponent's got to do a lot more than that. Second mountain bear. Oh. Well, there we go. 10-0. So you see how the aggression pays off. I was barely able to kill my opponent there. But because I pushed that 2 damage face, Night Captain there was lethal. 
I may just full keep this hand right now. Because we already have a perfect 2 drop into a good 3 drop. And we also have the heart strike to ping off any sort of threats that my opponent plays. Would really like to get a bone breaker for turn 1, but I don't see that happening. Like, I'd rather have this heart strike than most things, wouldn't I? I don't know, maybe I do mulligan the heart strike, because it's it's a reactive card, and we can also get something from Wand Maker anyways. It's a tough choice, but yeah, these cards, like, they can get stuck in your hand if your opponents don't play the right minions. And like, we have a lot of removal in our deck already, so I think this is right. My opponents also got the Loyal Henchman, just to... If you're paying attention, you saw that the extra card was added to his hand. And it's not a surprise, right? At 10 wins, gotta expect the Loyal Henchman. That's a good card. Well, we have three weapons in our deck. What's this? Is it a plagiarize? No, no, no. It's gotta be the snake. So if I play a minion, he's gonna get a 2-3 snake. I think I'm playing a minion anyways. Yep. Oh, it's not a snake. It's a it's an ambusher. Now I kinda wish I had the heart strike. Oh, that's a good card. This is kind of awkward for me. Because this 2-1 really blocks whatever I want to do. Like, I can't play Henchman this turn. And, yeah. I think I'll just throw it on a chain gang. So a good time to play Remorseless Winter. If this spell damage can stay on the board, that would be really nice. Can my opponent kill it on the board? You can go this, this, and then trade both these in. Yeah, that's kind of rough. I don't really know what to do. I think I'll make this trade and get the weapon and see what it is. Probably get play the henchman this turn. So what's my turn gonna be? Runes of Darkness, Loyal Henchman, and Hero Power? That doesn't seem great. Could just be Remorseless plus Runes and take the bad Hero Power, or take the bad Remorseless Winter. Or I can play the Steward and hope I get something. I think this is the play actually. Change of plans. I'm going to play the Bone Breaker because it immediately kills one of those. Oh, that is perfect. That is too perfect for us. So th then I just play this and the Warg. Is there another option though? Now this just puts me ahead on the board. It just feels like the right play. And I get to the save a weapon charge for later. And next turn I think we do Steward of Scrolls plus Loyal Henchman. So let's do this. I'll take an Asphyxiate. Just a really efficient board removal. Or do I take Obliterate? Because like I don't really care about my life total that much. Next turn, it's probably going to be like... Yeah, I don't even know what next turn's going to be. Maybe use the Runes of Darkness? It's never that, is it? Actually, yeah, I think I'll take an Obliterate here. 
It's probably slightly better than the Asphyxiate, especially in this position. Of course, my opponent's got the Loyal Henchman, so that's even more of an incentive to pick one of these hard removals. So that's the Henchman, yep. And Horn of Winter is good. So I really want to get the Greedy Partner down this turn. Because that means I get to play Nixia next turn. Let's see, what's happening? So 2 plus 2, that's 4. And then probably 3 and 1. I guess let's start with this then. Or maybe 2, 2, Hero Power. Now nah, let's just start with this. I don't think drawing is ever bad here. That's coming down for sure. This is coming down. Playing the runes, I think. Let's go with the big weapon. And do I ever just hit the minion? Do I ever horn a winter to clear the minion? I think I do. Because then I don't allow my opponent to get this value trade. Next turn can either be Anixia, or we can just Ashbringer and start hitting our opponent. It's really rough for my opponent to have like a really big beefy minion like the Mage Scribe. I want to start doing damage to my opponent quickly. So I think this and this is right. I do one of these trades. I ignore the 4-9. And I just go face. I think that's right. I'm not a big fan of sinking too much damage into this. Because we are starting to lower our opponent's health. Huh. Wonder if my... Yeah, that could be a... Plagiarize. So I don't want to give my opponent Anixia for obvious reasons. I think I'll just do probably like Blood Guard, Sneaky Scout, maybe a Baron. That's probably my whole turn. It it could be the um could be the snake guy. Let's do this first. No, we draw first. Oh, it is the snake guy. Then the face is going in there then. I just can't risk the plagiarize by playing Anixia, so that's why I did that. Uh, do I allow this value trade? Or do I just not care and go face? I'm gonna do this. Because it's possible that like the two damage is the difference between him killing a minion of mine and not. And if he hits face like... Ooh, okay. So you're just going to replay it? Sure. Really? You're going face with that? I feel like that's a mistake. How much damage do I have? 5? 11? I have lethal. That was a big, big mistake. To be fair, you don't expect Death Knight to have 10 burn damage. But oh my god, how am I 11 0? Okay, guys, I have three chances to get 12 wins. Can I do it? Do I just full keep this hand? So, what am I doing? Turn 2, I'm playing this. Turn 3, I'm either playing Baron or Howling Blast. Turn 4, I coin out Night Captain, or I play something that I draw. I don't hate this hand, actually. You know, this could be a mistake. I should probably just mulligan these two. The Shaman have a lot of 1 HP things? It's not really. 
That's probably right. I just want to look for my better cards like Mining Casualties and stuff. Okay, Nixian Warder is pretty good. We have two dragons that can go with it. Yep, my opponent's also got Henchmen. Last game we found an Obliterate to take out our opponent's Henchmen, but our deck has zero hard removal. Okay, do I go with the Warg here? I guess. Push 3 damage face, it's not bad. Maybe I should have killed that totem actually. Alright, so we have a henchman. Dang, if I had a dragon this would be so good, I could just coin that out. I think I start with this. I see touch. Um, hero power seems fine here. I get a free ping in the future. Seems okay. Kind of a slow turn for me, unfortunately. All right, I think I just play the blood guard and push two damage face. Like the problem is, this is vulnerable to hex. There's nothing I can do about that though. And I clear that because I don't want this thing to get healed. It's better to take out that totem sooner than later. That does fully clear my board, unfortunately. We do tri triple twos. It just puts the most stuff on the board, and I don't want to use a spell to give him that. I guess I start with that. Ruin forging. I don't play that. Oh, I thought I missed the greedy partner thing for a second. I Yeah, if I didn't have the oh, henchman, I should play the greedy partner first. This is extremely rough. The Shaman's not letting me take control of early tempo. But I for sure want to kill that 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I should have drawn first, right? It's alright. I'm going to push this damage face. There's really no punish for that. You see, he makes this trade anyways. Right, well this is a pretty good Howling Blast. Yeah, that's pretty good. We have the corpses, so might as well use them. Actually, I should go here and pure power that. And then do I swing face? I think I swing face because we have the rune forging. Hey, the sneaky scout ping comes in handy. All right, now we're pressuring our opponent. Now they're very low. They've got nothing on the board, and we have a big threat. Well, not a big threat. We have like spell damage. This is scary, but we're in a good position. Like next time we can go. 5 plus 4, build a very sticky board, and our Nixia is gonna like, if they don't have, there's a good chance they have nothing to clear Nixia, because you can't target Nixia unless you kill the whelps, so they'd have to have like, um, Lightning Storm plus Hex. It's kind of tricky to do both at the same time. 
Which one? 5 plus 4 or 5 plus 4? No, 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 I should do this first, because then this gets a plus 1 plus 1. And then I can play Runeforging afterwards. So let's do the Runeforging first. Uh, this gives me... I don't know what this gives me. A bone breaker, sure. The dragons come, and we, we don't have to equip that right away. So it costs zero. Push the three damage face. You don't have to re-equip that. Okay. We're in a nice aggressive position here. Let's hope our opponent doesn't have anything to clear. What do they have? Oh no, not a Lotus Agents. Yikes. My opponent just used AoE. I think I just go Nixia and try to seal the deal here. This goes here. Face goes into here. Oh no. No, this goes here. My face goes here. I could have maybe pushed an extra damage by like coining hero power, but let's not think about that. So does he have... Oh no, 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 no. That's the only thing I didn't want to see. No lightning storm, no lightning storm. Wait, that clears his board. Nothing to kill my 9-7. Yes! 12-0! How? How did I get 12-0? How is this a 12-0 deck? What? <laughs> okay. Honestly, this arena run, I think was a good testament to how to play decks that don't have tons of value. You just have to go for a lot of aggression. What do we get? So we get one Badlands pack, one Voyage pack, and how much gold is this? 395... 425... Okay, let's open the packs. Oh, oh nice. Actually... I don't even think I've got my legendary from Voyage of the Second City. Okay. And one last thing. Flawless Death Knight Gladiator. Oh. You know, in this meta, if you would have asked me what I thought my second 12 win run would be, I'd probably say Shaman. Shaman would be my second 12 win class, but somehow I do it with Death Knight, and I do it with a mediocre deck. Like, this is one of the decks that after you draft, you just feel like, hmm, maybe I should retire and draft a new one, but I didn't. And somehow I got 12 wins. What an arena run, guys. 12-0 with this deck. When I first finished drafting this deck, which was yesterday, I thought I would be happy if this went six or seven wins. But surprisingly, I won game after game after game after game, and eventually I hit 9-0 and thought, you know what, this actually has a good chance of getting 12 wins. And not only did it get 12 wins, it went undefeated. There were a lot of games that felt kind of close and scary because my opponents were getting to the late game and were outvaluing me. But the way that I won was I played Raid Boss and Ixia, 
and they had no way of dealing with it, so I was able to just finish them off in time. And sometimes in like at like six or seven mana, I would have to finish my opponent off by playing a weapon, swinging face a bunch of times, and just using my remaining damage spells to kill my opponent. So let's look at this deck and see what what really made it work. So first of all, the legendary. This carried the deck very hard. Raid Boss Anixia is just a super good card. It's essentially a board wipe. So you have the 8 damage and you have the whelps. And you try to keep as much of the whelps alive and force your opponent to have... The only way your opponent can kill the Anixia is if they have exactly first an AoE and then a single target removal. So they have to have both at the same time. Raid Boss Anixia being immune means they can't target it. It means that Priest can't steal it with Convert. So this is a tough minion to remove. And of course, Loyal Henchman being the um, treasure that it is, it's, it's like Patches of the Pirate if you played Hearthstone back in the day. Because it's a free card, it doesn't cost you anything, and it can get extremely overstatted at like 4 mana. Well, unlike when you have 4 mana crystals. So, yeah, this is a very unfair duels treasure, in my opinion. There shouldn't really be any cards that give you a free card at the start of the game. So, yeah, I'm not sure if the treasures will still be in the game next arena season. I assume probably not. This is just like an experiment they were doing while they were removing duels. Now, if you scroll through, if I scroll through this deck, you'll see that there's not a lot of value generation. Uh, I was actually going for like a double frost. That's why you see these weird choices with you know, Future Emissary and Humongous Owl. It's because I was trying to dodge all the other runes. I was going for double frost so I can draft a bunch of these frost strikes and try to play a value death knight deck. But in the end, I only get got one of these frost strikes. So I had to play this deck in a very aggressive style, try to kill my opponent before they can generate a lot of resources to use against me. We also have the Steward of Scrolls being good not only because it discovers a spell, but because it has one spell damage, which works very well with like Howling Blast and Remorseless Winter. Just having that extra one damage a week can really make the difference, as you saw in one of those games that I played. Another card I'd like to mention as being extremely good, but I don't think people talk about it that much, is Bonebreaker. It only costs you one mana, and this can kill two small minions and deal four damage to your opponent's face. Four damage face, that's the same amount of damage that, for example, an Eviscerate does. And it's for one mana, and it can also kill minions. So this card is just really good at pushing damage face, really good for an aggressive style deck like this.